For market volatility, investors are facing uncertainty in their recent weeks over the Fed, trade policy, global growth. Joining me right now is the co-founder of Graycroft, managing director, Alan Petrikoff. Alan, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks so much for joining us. So venture capital has been a big participant in terms of the growth in the economy, in terms of what we're seeing on the IPO calendar. Tell us first where you're seeing growth in terms of venture capital before I get to the public markets. Well, I think we're seeing actually growth every place. You I do. mean, uh, we're just to give you an example yeah. in our firm in New York City, we get approximately 100 to 150 new submissions every week. Wow. In our California office, we're getting something like 40. But think about that, the flow of deals over a period of a year. And it's happening that way all over the country. Why do you think that is, Alan? Do people see a, a new optimism in terms of now looking to raise money now? Are the ideas different, more plentiful? Why do you think that is? Honestly, I think it's, there's an entrepreneurial surge going on in this country that if you go to a business school, which I do very often and make talks, and you say, how many people are going to start your own business? 90% of the class is about to start a business. Why? They haven't got a great concept. They just are very excited about what they see the last guy did and the, someone they know who graduated three years ago and has now got to, you know, raise $50 million, and they just assume they can do it. And, I love this. Yeah, you know, I love this entrepreneurial surge that you're talking about. And it's across the board. What have you seen in terms of exciting new deals? Well, what's getting uh, you excited? Uh, we have recently invested in a company called Icertis, which is taking a very ba basic uh, service, which is managing people's contracts. Who ever thought of all the contracts we have sitting in drawers that are now also being digitized that people would want to have access to and be able to compare for the last 10 years mm -hmm. and ha it's a huge problem from for big companies and small companies we went into a, a company recently in the uh, uh, osmosis called which is doing uh, it's very much like a Khan Academy for the medical profession pre-med med residents. is this interns. wondery no that's okay wondery wonder also wonder uh, I've gotten you. very interested in the uh, whole podcast world because I think podcast is the new media, really. It sounds it's prosaic because it's audio, and we all have been listening to Audible, which, by the way, I was participant in the start of that in the early 90s, mm. uh, which has done fabulous. Uh, but podcast now, I'm sure you're listening to podcasts. Yeah. I'm listening to it. We have the two hottest podcasts, Dirty John and Dr. Death, which are number one and two on the podcast. Hit yeah, the you, you say podcasts are the bright stars of the media industry right now. Are, are you thinking that this company, the podcast company, Wondery, is that what, is, you're invested in? It. Will, does it eventually go public? I, you know, when I started Graycroft, I'm sorry to go back, but you know, I built a very big company called Apex, which was huge. And in 2006, I decided Act Two, I'd start and go back to my roots and start in small companies again. And I started, and one of the basic theses was, based on what I'd seen, is everyone doesn't have an IPO in their future, which is the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. Such a small percentage of the companies that venture people back actually end up at public markets. They end up growing and it's staying private or getting sold to another company and we've seen an enormous enormous uh, purchase by other companies public or private of most of the companies in the business so I proved prescient however I have to say as we end 2018 mm. the IPO market now seems a more realistic it's back in the in my opinion there's an IPO in the future of many of our companies which wasn't there 10 years ago well that then why because you look at the and first of all got to be impressed with the ipo situation in 2018 and even the expectations for 19 given the, the month of november and december i know the expectations came down by the end of the year because things were going really well and then the market conditions changed but you're still talking about a very strong slate of companies going public or about to launch in 2019, even in the face of these wild markets? Well, you know, you have, you have Slack, you have Uber, you have Lyft, Lyft you have... Pinterest. You, you've got a whole bunch Airbnb. Of, yeah, everybody, all the names that have now become household names. Right. And they're all consumer, for the most part, consumer-related. It's not Slack. And there's an excitement around now, not necessarily because the public market is good. Is these companies have been around five, six, seven years. They're not brand new companies. That everyone's been talking about them, and they're in the press every day. So that builds up a certain excitement. And we had, well, I think we had 40 IPOs of companies with over a billion dollar valuation. That's right. Which means there are a, there's a real under 
pinning in the market now of a lot of companies that have been growing that have built value and they're well, excited. Well, Facebook was once a small company back in the day. Now it's got a privacy fallout and legal issues. The social media giant facing its first lawsuit over the Cambridge Analytica scandal. I'm going to get your thoughts on this because uh, Washington, D.C. files the suit claiming the company failed to protect user data and had weak oversight. Have these companies become too powerful at this point? Are they too big? What's your take on some of these social media giants? Well, it's, a it's a controversial subject, and we could debate this much longer than this program. I am concerned about the monopolistic position, and I'm using that word in a, in, in a gentle way. Facebook, Google, Amazon are very large companies. They control an enormous amount of spending, of advertising, of search. Uh, you're talking about, I think, between Facebook and Google, you've got 65, 70 percent of the online advertising goes through that. Well, and Google controls 90 percent of search. Should these companies be regulated differently? Well, I think we should be concerned, and we've got to figure out whether they are companies that have gotten to a position where they may just be too big. When I heard last week that Amazon this year will sell four and a half billion dollars of advertising, I didn't even know Amazon was in the advertising wow, business. You're right. I mean, I, you know, to me, it's a direct to consumer play. And the, the big thing about the word monopoly, in, the, in our history, monopolies were companies that charged too much and could get away with it because you didn't have alternative. Yeah. Now we have these quasi monopolies that are lowering prices, giving you faster delivery, the consumer's benefiting. Well, not for search, right? Google is 90% of search. I, I, so there's a monopolistic situation. What, what's your average valuation of the company that you look at? at when, at the stage we look yeah, at? Yeah, at the stage, in venture capital, at Graycroft, how small are the companies? They range, our initial investments range anywhere from a million to five million, and over the life of the company, we'll go up probably seven, eight, maybe as high, 10 would be high. But then we have a growth fund, which takes the next phase, and that'll go from 15 to $30 million. And, and one of your investments is the wildly popular scooter company, Bird. Let's talk about that. Why do you see growth here? Well, first of all, Bird's in our growth fund, which fits the definition. Uh, we think that the last mile problem is a very exciting problem. I mean, we're seeing it all over the country today with bikes and scooters are I mean, it's an exciting. Have you been on a scooter yet? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah I like yeah, scooters. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, everybody, everybody loves scooters. Yeah. I mean, no matter where you go. What's I, not to love? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fun experience. Uh, as much as you may hear about the one or two accidents, it's really been a relatively safe business. And uh, it's answering the needs of a, If you're going to go from 47th Street to 57th Street, what better way to do it rather than stand in the street waiting for a taxi? By the way, that's why I liked what they did with the New York City bikes. Uh, the city bike program in, in New York City. 